and we hope that this will be useful. But this um, webinar will be recorded. Um, if anyone wants to go back and have a look um, and listen again, you, you'd be very welcome. And we can also share this to anyone else who, who would like access to that. Um, we are we are actually in the building and um, the college building. It is still open. We are still functioning, but most of our learning is actually happening um, uh, remotely. So um, it, it is actually good to be in and to be talking to people. We have um, the option for you to answer questions, uh, ask questions, and we will hopefully be able to answer them. However, if we run over, then we will get back to everyone individually with the answers to those questions because they will likely be um, individualised to, to your own needs. So we'll, we'll make a start um, with that. Hopefully, <laughs> if my PowerPoint will work, no. Um, OK, <laughs> my PowerPoint is not moving down. So I shall rely on my trusty. basics, maths, English and work, pre work preparation topics and it's supported fully by the college. So those work preparation topics may be CV building or it may be something that's directly linked to the, the line of work that the trainee is undertaking. That has always been eligible for 16 to 24 year olds or for anyone who's 25 who has an education healthcare plan. And again, we can explain those in details if that um, is required. Um, the purpose of, of a traineeship is to prepare a young person for an apprenticeship or a job if that young person doesn't have any skills or any experience within that sector. And for that to be successful, uh, the trainee will have to be guaranteed an interview um, for an apprenticeship or a job with the um, organisation that they're carrying out the traineeship. But that's if there is a job available. If there isn't a job available, the opportunity to attend a mock interview or to get support from, from that point of view is, is, would be deemed as a successful outcome. The benefit to employers is that it's a short programme that, that is funded by the government. There is no cost to the employer um, and fully supported by the college. And we will try and make it as bespoke as we possibly can. And it's designed to suit both the needs of the business and the needs of the trainee. And ultimately, it will develop um, hopefully a loyal and talented workforce. And, and also as an employer, it means that you can contribute towards the, the unemployment risk that, that has come around. Um, and it's also a route into apprenticeship. So it, it is um, a positive, a positive start. It's often been classed as try before you buy. Um, not sure how we feel about that, but it's um, that's that's what's been thought about. Thank you. Um, OK, we just move on to the next topic, which our computer, everything works before and now it's there we go. Wonderful. So the basics around apprenticeships. Um, so if you are considering employing an apprentice and um, the apprentice must be aged 16 and have a contract of employment for the duration of the training, um, which would be a minimum of 12 months. But actually, with some recent changes, that is slightly longer and we recommend a minimum of 15 months. But we can explain that when, when it comes to those um, individualised discussions. So the apprentice must be paid at least the minimum wage, um, which is £4.15 per hour for the first year of their employment. As soon as it moves into the, the second and um, future years of their employment, it would be the minimum wage for their age. So that's the minimum apprenticeship wage. Um, an apprenticeship combines working um, with studying to gain the skills and knowledge in a specific job role. And that is available to new or current employees. There's a huge range that, that can tap into to the apprenticeship training. 
Um, there is government funding available to cover some of the cost of training, but that's very much down to the age of the apprentice and the size of the organisation. So again, we can give some guidance on that. Um, if you employ an apprentice under the age of 25 years old, you um, no longer have to pay their national insurance contributions um, on their earnings. So again, we can, we can talk you through that um, as required. When, if you are considering recruiting an apprentice, they must be working with experienced staff, so they can't be working independently and they have to be learning skills that are specific to a job role and, and, and a required job role for your business. And the apprentice will study during their working week, for example, at college, but not in all cases. There are there are alternatives, but that that means that they are studying effectively 20 percent of their contracted hours is learning. Sometimes in college, sometimes that will be in the workplace. A summary of the benefits. Um, it's a productive and effective way for an organisation to grow talent and develop motivated, skilled and qualified workforce where you've almost moulded them into to the organisation and the, the ethos of, of your business. There are fees for recruiting an apprentice. Um, those fees vary a, a range across a different range of situations. It may be that if you're a levy payer, um, you will have to pay the full fee from your levy account. Um, if you're not a levy payer, you will probably know that because you won't have heard of the term. Um, 16 to 18 year olds are fully funded by the government, but anyone over the age of 19, um, the employer has to make a contribution towards that training. But again, we can go into detail with that. Thanks, Sinead. So that's how things were, and this is how things have changed as they stand now and we are receiving constant guidance and our aim is to keep our employers as up to date as we possibly can. So from the 1st of August, trainees and an employer who takes on a trainee for that period of six weeks up until six months will now receive an incentive payment um, which will be £1,000 per trainee. And the other change is that eligibility for someone to do a traineeship is up to um, a level three. So any young person who has a level three qualification, which can be the equivalent to an A level, um, will now be eligible to access the traineeship programme. In the past, it was level two. Um, and then if I go on and talk about the changes in apprenticeships. So this is probably where we've seen the, the, the biggest um, the biggest impact with the changes. So from the 1st of August, if you recruit an apprentice and they start anywhere from the 1st of August until the 31st of January 21, there will be an incentive payment for employers who hire a new apprentice. And I'll come up, I'll come back to the fact that they have to be new and what that means uh, in a moment. So a new, a new payment will um, be paid to employers of £2,000 for each apprentice that is aged under 25. And then a £1,500 payment will be made to each employer for any new apprentice that's aged over 25. The apprentice has to be new to your business. So they have to have a contract of employment with the start date between the 1st of August and the 31st of January inclusive. And they must not have been employed by you within the six months prior to their contact, a contract start date. And that's something that we will work with you as to, as to what that means for your business and for any existing staff that you have. Now, these payments are in, are in addition to an existing payment that's made of £1,000 for any 16 to 18 year old apprentice or a 25 year old apprentice who has an education and healthcare plan. So that's in addition to that payment. So if we just move on. Thank you. There's a summary that we've provided because we will send these um, this PowerPoint out to anyone who requires it because there is a lot of information and I probably speak very quick. Um, so the summary is 16 to 24 year old um, traineeship, £1,000 um, employer incentive and 25 if the individual has an education healthcare plan. Apprentices. Um, the employer is entitled to £3,000 if the apprentice is aged 16 to 18. The apprentice is aged 19 to 24, it's £2,000. 
and all apprentices aged 25 plus, it's £1,500. And again, only for new starts um, between the 1st of August and the 31st of January that are claimed via the online apprenticeship system, um, which is available from the 1st of September. I'm going to hand you over to my colleague now, Sinead. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so what does this mean for your business? If you are looking for a, a member of staff and you know that you have an apprentice opportunity within your organisation, come and speak to us. We can talk to you about the apprenticeships um, that we can support here through college and the incentives available to take on apprentice uh, might be available to you as well. However, if you're not sure, if you're thinking that there may be an opportunity to take on an apprentice, but you're not sure you're ready for that commitment just yet, it might be a traineeship that you'll look at first. Again, as we mentioned before, these are quite bespoke. But it might be a situation where you might be ready to offer a young person between the age of 16 and 24 a traineeship by giving the them the opportunity to gain the experience that will help them to be work ready within six months of starting with you. It's likely to, um, that this might be the case if you have a young person who's just finishing school and college, so they don't have any work experience yet, so they're untried and untested, and you want to put them through a traineeship before you can commit to employing them as an apprentice. If you do this, you would get the, uh, the traineeship incentive um, and then if they're successful in an interview with you and they progress onto an apprenticeship, then there may be the apprenticeship funding, uh, incentive funding available as well. How can we support your search for the right employee? Um, well, we have a talent pool here at Kendall College, which is a database of over 200 people that have registered from the local area who are interested and actively looking for apprenticeship and traineeship opportunities. These could be your potential future job candidates. Whilst they're in our talent pool, they receive direct support from the college and updates and opportunities related to the sector. Um, they undertake tasks which help them to be employment ready. We use the government's Find an Apprenticeship website to support you if you want to advertise an apprenticeship or traineeship vacancy. And we can provide full screening and aptitude service should you choose to follow some recruitment with us. This next slide here just suggests some of the apprenticeships that we offer here at college. So you can see there's quite a wide list there, but the main message that we'd like to give you today is make contact with us. College is open, we're, we're here working. Um, if you email college, apprenticeships at kendall.ac.uk or phone the numbers that are coming up on the next slide, we're happy to talk to you. We can talk to you individually about your bespoke situation and see what's, um, how we can help you to support um, your business to grow. So if you want to ask questions specific to your business and you're not sure where to start or if you have plans and you know that you want to recruit an apprentice, then please come and talk to our team. Unfortunately, our website is currently undergoing maintenance at the moment, but in which case, if you contact the numbers just displayed on screen now or the email address below, then we'll make sure that somebody gets back to you and we can have that conversation to help you get started on your journey with your new trainee or apprentice. Thank you, Kelly. Okay. So so if you have any questions, um, there is uh, availability to put some questions into the chat. Um, we'll just have a look at those now and we'll answer what we can um, here on screen. OK, so we have a question. Do I need to make a decision about recruiting an apprentice before the course starts in September? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Many of our courses, um, you can, uh, the apprentice can start at any point during the year. Um, so again, it's a matter of coming and talking to us. Um, we have what we call roll on roll of prog programmes. So we're ready to help you to support your recruitment in an apprentice when you're ready to hire. So you don't need to make a decision before September and then have to wait for another year. OK, we have another question that's come through. Will you help us with the recruitment of an apprentice as we have never had one and are interested in taking someone on? So, so yes, of course, um, we have um, a fantastic team of staff who understand the requirements and the, the, the guidance that uh, has to be followed to take on an apprentice. So we will put you in touch with either myself or Sinead or one of our facilitators who will be able to support you through that process. Um, and that can be as much as you need us to do or as little as you need us to do. But we can certainly send you proformers, we can send templates, we can make sure that you have the, the right apprentice 
for your organisation and make sure that they're on the right programme because that's the important part. We need to make sure that the programme that the apprentice is going to undertake is actually what will benefit your business. So, so yes, absolutely, we, we will support with that full process. Okay, so the next question is, can we use the incentive payment to pay the 5% fees? Um, yes, you can use the incentive payment to pay the fees. Um, it, it's not an automatic. So the incentive payment comes from the government and the fees have to be paid by the employer. So you can't, you can't um, um, offset, offset one. Thank you. Yeah. you can't offset one to pay the other. But yes, um, you, you can actually use the, the incentive payment can be used for anything um, at all. You can use the incentive payment to contribute to the apprentices um, salary. You can use the incentive payment to contribute towards any travel um, that you want to support your apprentice with or maybe any resources, textbooks or any PPE that the, the apprentice requires that wouldn't automatically be provided by the employer. So you can actually use that incentive payment for anything that you require at all. Um, looks like I have to scroll. There's some more questions coming in. Um, Oh, I've got a new one. Um, can you see that? I have a, yeah, if I have an apprentice progressing from level two to level three, will I get the incentive payment? That's that's the part that we, we don't have any absolute clarity on at the moment. And if we read the guidance, it appears that that's not the case. And um, that, that um, because you already have uh, they already have a contract of employment with you that's lasted more than six months. However, we know that the spirit of this guidance is to keep apprentices in employment. So it's something that as a college we, we are looking further into to determine um, what the, the declaration is um, and, and if, it, if they're actually going to receive a new contract of employment because they're um, undertaking a new um, new role as, as a progression. So we will have to clarify that, but reading the guidance, it seems no. But we know that there is um, some other um, funding available that will support um, returning furloughed staff, not just apprentices, to the workplace. And we hope that that will actually support that, that process. Okay. I can yeah. see another question there, which says, uh, can I assume you'll be open for teaching in September? Teaching has continued yeah. all during lockdown. We, we've never shut the build. We've never shut the learning. Teaching, yeah. um, although some of our apprentices, or most of our apprentices, are not in the building, uh, we've continued to support our apprentices via online delivery and the use of our e-portfolios. Um, so we um, fully expect our um, apprenticeship learning to continue as it has done right through September. From September, yeah. Whether that's in the building or whether that will continue to be remotely, we will make sure all of our employers and all of our apprentices are aware of how their programme will work. And some will be different from others. If it's a very theory based um, apprenticeship, then it, it may be that we, we choose remote delivery to continue that. Whereas if there's a, a heavy emphasis on the practical elements, obviously those will become priority for, um, for access to the building. And again, things change so regularly, but we will be teaching, we will carry on teaching even beyond September, yes. yes. Are there any more questions? Okay, it doesn't look like we have any more questions coming in, but hopefully um, those of you who have, have watched have found it useful. We realise there's a lot of information and if you haven't employed an apprentice or had a trainee before, obviously there's a lot to ask and a lot to think about. Please, please get in touch with us. Um, we, we will be continuing, um, apart from our couple of weeks holiday, we will be continuing over summer, but there will always be someone who will get back to you um, and we can answer your questions and provide any support. So with no more questions yeah. coming in, we, we would like to thank you for listening and um, hopefully we will speak to you all soon and stay safe and well. Thank you very much. Bye.